Okay, so I have a comment update position video for you. But before we get into that, I want to show you something. In the previous ones, I've been telling you watch Venus's position. And Mercury just had that little pass by of Venus. So this was taken Thursday night at about 9.50 Eastern Standard Time. And this beautiful dot right there, that's Venus. And see that little tiny guy right there? That's Mercury. Mercury is only ever about six degrees away from the sun. And so here is that close encounter. Now, I the next night I didn't get because we had rainstorms. And that would have put Mercury right here side by side over top of Venus. So now they're separating again. But so we're using Venus as our reference point because Venus is the evening star right now and one of the brightest and easiest identifiable things in the sky. Okay, so now for your comet finder. So this is set for Monday, the 25th at 8 p.m. And we're in that beautiful time period where the sun is still up, which is great, except for when we want to do star viewing. And it looks like Monday might be a possible day next week. The next day is Saturday because we have those rainstorms moving through. But as always, here's your western sky. Here's your northern sky. The sun is still up. There is Venus and there's Mercury. You should be able to maybe see those two points. Definitely Venus. Maybe Mercury, maybe not. But so notice how Swan is just slightly above Venus right now. And Atlas is right there even with the sun. We're not going to find Atlas at this point, the Y4 Atlas. And it's still binocular viewing where Swan is supposed to be able to be seen without those binoculars. So this is 8 p.m. I know it says 00 UTC, but that's the difference between Universal Time and Eastern Standard Time. So let's advance an hour to 9 o'clock. At this point, the sun has set, and so has the Y4 Atlas. All right, so... As your reference points, here's the western sky and here's the northern sky. So look for the bright identifiable. Use Venus. Venus is always your identifying mark just because of how bright it is in the sky. And if you can catch Mercury, that little tiny dot, you will see this nice cute little triangle between Venus and this star and Mercury. And this star is bright enough that you should see it. Okay, so. Here is the setting shoulder of Orion. Here are the twins, the Gemini. And you'll notice a tiny sliver of the moon there caught in the middle of Gemini. Here is Perseus. Here is the W crown of Cassiopeia. And bright Polaris, which is our polar wheel star, which is in Ursa Minor, the little bear or the little dipper. And here is Ursa Major, the big dipper or the big bear. So... Comet Y1 is at the top of Ursa Major at this point. You will need binoculars to see him. Y4 has set, so he's gone. The one we want is Swan. Swan is going to be binocular strength or naked eye strength. So that means you should be able to see him, but you'll have nice definition with the binoculars. All right, so nine o'clock, let's move to 10. Okay. So at this point, Venus is now gone, but Mercury is still there. If you could identify Mercury, he's still there. Here's the twins of Gemini and the sliver of the moon. Here is Perseus. And there's the W crown of Cassiopeia. Do you see this? That's the band of the Milky Way. All right, here's our wheel star, Polaris, which is in the bear, the little bear. And here is the big bear. So Y1 is still caught in the middle of the big bear. And here is Swan. Okay. Let's advance another hour. Okay. We're now at 11 o'clock. Here's the band of the Milky Way. There is the crown of Cassiopeia. It's wheeling around Polaris because that's what they all do. They all wheel around this star in the night sky. So here's our dipper. You'll notice he has um, turned the little bear. Here is Ursa Major. It will have turned as well. What Y1 is still caught inside that um, particular confirmation. Here is the Gemini with the sliver of the moon. 
and there is Swan. You'll notice that Swan is in the process of setting, and then we're gonna advance one more hour. Okay, so we are now at midnight. And so here is all that's left of the twins, the Gemini constellation. Swan has just hit the horizon at this point, depending upon where your horizon happens to be. And here is all that's left of Perseus. Here is the W crown of Cassiopeia and your wheel star Polaris. And there is your Ursa minor, your little bear, the Dipper. And here is Ursa major and Atlas Y1 is still caught in the middle. Okay, now, in order to see Y1, you need binoculars. In order to see Y4, you need binoculars. Swan, binoculars are better viewing, but you should be able to see it. You're looking for a nice, bright head with a green tail. Okay, so this was Monday. It looks like we're going to have some clear sky and some clouds. Now, we continue looking at the week's projection. Saturday is the next best viewing day because it says pretty much completely clear skies. So we're going to do the exact same sequence. So we're starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 30th, Saturday. All right, so once again, the sun is still up. Yay! Except the fact that we want to view some comets, but it's okay. So here is your western sky, and there is the belt of Orion and his two shoulders, okay? Here is your northern sky. Once again, here is the W crown of Cassiopeia. Here is Perseus. Here is Venus. It's going to be harder now to see Venus because of the passing of time. Venus is in the process of transitioning from the evening star into the morning star. So it's chasing the sun. All right, and there's Mercury. This is as far as Mercury will ever move from the sun. Okay, so right now Mercury is right there at Gemini the twins. All right, here is that Perseus constellation. And once again, back to the easy identifiable, there is Polaris, our wheel star in the sky. And so here is Ursa Minor, the little bear or dipper, and here is Ursa Major. Okay, notice Swan is the only comet that we can see at this point. And they're still saying that at this point he is still visible without a binocular or telescope, but obviously those devices will help magnify the light and make them easier to see. So we're gonna advance to nine o'clock. Okay, sun is set, yes. Here is the band of the Milky Way. Here is the W crown of Cassiopeia. Here is Perseus. Here is Mercury, still caught there on the edge of Gemini. Here is Swan in between those two. There is Polaris and Ursa Minor. And here is Ursa Major. And you'll notice that Y1 is still roughly caught inside the Big Bear. Okay, advance one more hour. Okay, so here's the W crown of Cassiopeia, and there's the band of the Milky Way. There's Perseus. There's those two bright stars of the twins. Here is Polaris and Ursa Minor. Here is Ursa Major. Y4 is caught in the middle of that. And there is Swan, the one that we've been focusing on lately. Okay, let's advance another hour. Okay, so here's Perseus. There's the W crown of Cassiopeia. Here's the two shoulders, technically the heads of the twins. Here is Polaris and our Ursa Minor, the little bear. Here is Ursa Major, right there. You'll notice that Atlas at this point is slightly outside of that. And Swan is right at the horizon. Okay. So, this is what we can see. Keep in mind that the moon is getting brighter as we go, so that does make these guys a little harder to pinpoint. But that is our positioning for Monday and for Saturday of next week. 
based off the weather report, those look like the two days to go and do your viewing. So as always, I have made this with theskylive.com, which is an online planetarium, which is just awesome because you put in your date, your time, your actual latitude, longitude, or your city and town, and it will generate a star map and tell you what is visible for that particular area, even in the section of sky that you want to watch. So I really recommend that you go in there and use that to plan your viewing events. All right, happy viewing. I will give you an update again next week.